Hello, it's been a while since I've posted to my personal channel. I want to change that because I think now is a particularly exciting time to be a front end web designer. There are so many new approaches and opportunities around and with evergreen browsers, things have just come so fast that it's hard to keep up with them. But even just knowing a little, I think can put us leaps ahead of the majority and even further ahead of AI. This does mean breaking with my usual WordPress content, but I'm hoping there might be some here who will be also interested in content on newer ways to build websites that don't require a third party platform, at least on some projects. And by that, I'm thinking more of personal or small business sites under 50 pages that make up the majority of the web. And this is the bulk of my work because it's easy to find. And sure, I can't charge much for the initial build and many are not interested in ongoing improvements, but I have found these clients to be loyal in terms of sticking with me for hosting and care. This keeps my income stable and it allows me a generous amount of free time. I should say this change is not a slight on Beaver Builder. It remains the most suitable solution I found for a number of my clients. And I could not be more grateful for the stability that they have provided increasingly against the odds over the last 10 years. They, like much of their community, are some of the nicest and most genuine people in WordPress. And I do miss that. It's simply that over this 10 years, in spite of the client friendliness of Beaver Builder, most clients have concluded that it's best to give their content updates to me. So there's no sense in me burdening myself with the ongoing maintenance, updates, performance and security work that comes with WordPress, not to mention the strange things and people that some clients allow in when I can get paid the same for none of this. And since the recent shift to static hosting, I can cover my clients' needs for free and it's faster, more reliable and maintenance free too. So the two things I would like to bring to this channel are what I've called the pompously named intrinsic framework. In many ways, this is a follow on to the Beaver Junction project that I started here. It's just a website folder of my own HTML and CSS templates and snippets to help me avoid coding as much as possible. But I would like to make this more shareable, particularly for those who think of themselves as non-coders, which I do, but I could use some feedback to gauge whether this would help others enough to justify putting extra time into it. As it's possible now, I quite like the idea of setting up CSS so that non-coders only really need to change variables. So the experience is much more similar to using a page builder. I do owe an apology for letting the Beaver Junction site disappear. It's on a new domain, but only there for reference. There was a lot done there that never made it to the main site or to videos because in doing that, I started to realize that I was quite out of touch with modern CSS and that there were better ways. The other content that I would like to add is extras to the No Script show. This is a podcast that I started with Nathan Wrigley. We are soon going to start doing a series, redesigning live business sites from beginning to end, as if we are working with a real client. This will probably be done over three videos with the end result being a template that anyone can take and use in their own projects. This is content that will only be on that YouTube channel. So subscribe there. If that sounds like your kind of thing, link to that will be below as, as well as everything else that I mentioned. Um. I will use this to expand on the intrinsic framework, but I think to make that more useful generally, I will need some instructional how-to videos. And I think the better place for that might be here. To make sense of the changes I'm making, I really need to set that in the context of technological shifts that we've seen over the last decade. I'll probably go into more detail in some additional videos, but the too long didn't read version of that is that since 2017, Browsers and the native web platform has changed beyond recognition. This is when the web tech giants such as Google, Microsoft, Apple, and Adobe started working more closely together within the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. 
to make all browsers better and to get the web platform back to what it was always intended to be. There has been over the years a, a gradual recognition that vague specifications from the W3C and browser competition can hinder the very thing that allows them to exist. I think it was Jeremy Keith who said that Microsoft did a quite remarkable and noble thing a number of years ago in supporting a Firefox proposal, which effectively saw them lose their 90% dominance with Internet Explorer. 2017 was also the year that CSS Grid, the first and long-awaited purpose-built layout system for the web, gained major browser support and finally ended the need to hack web design with HTML tables, flash, floats, absolute positioning, and still to a certain extent, Flexbox. I think it's the learning of these hacks that made CSS appear so weird and difficult. Grid has corrected this, but even though it's suggested that we learn this first, it's still only used on less than 20% of sites after more than seven years of browser support. I think with the growing commercialization of DIY website solutions over the last decade, it's become easier for us to forget one of the web's most important rules, and that's the rule of least power. A similar thing in engineering terms is called keep it simple, stupid. If a project only requires a few hundred lines of evergreen code, we really should have a, just, a good justification for millions of extra lines coming in through scores of independent vendors who may or may not still be alive somewhere in the world, if not for our own sanity, at least for the environment. I suspect this is a rule that we're likely to learn repeatedly in hindsight whilst there's a profit in marketing complex solutions for shorter term gains. It's something, of course, that the W3C cannot do, which has made them comparatively slow. But I think since much of the work or thinking work has been done there, they are speeding up considerably. Another thing that I think is forgotten is that HTML and CSS are fault-friendly languages designed to be easier for all of us to use, not for elite programmers to wrap up in JavaScript and make us reliant on them and their bosses. And finally, that CSS, the, the web's design system, was intentionally not a WYSIWYG builder solution for reasons which I think are now just starting to bite us on the bum. So if you're like me and have been operating on the reasonably justified but now outdated notion that CSS is too time-consuming, difficult, or quirky to deal with directly, you might want to update where you're getting your knowledge from. I think the key thing to know about modern CSS is that it's been refactored to take us forward into the new era, which is often called intrinsic web design, where we now need to serve thousands of device sizes and new places where the web is appearing. And additionally, new preferences that allow users to choose their own experience of the web. As a relatively new medium, web designers have tended to replicate what they know in the same way that cinematographers for 30 years staged films as if they were theatre plays. And we are in the main, as Matthias Ott puts it, still painting pretty pictures of websites. And we might now want to listen again to the early pioneers of the web and start working more directly with the material of the web. I think this is becoming more of an imperative for non-hobbyists who need to create websites that are going to fully function across the entire web going forward and do not discriminate against some users. I'll put a link to Matthias Ott's recent CSS Day talk. In some ways, this talk, like many others, could be seen as an update on the influential one given by Jen Simmons in 2018 called Everything you know about web design just changed, where she also coined the term intrinsic design. Now, you're probably a lot smarter than me, but I do know that it took me a long time for me to properly wrap my head around this. So I'm going to leave it there for now. If I've not managed to alienate all my friends here, then I will come back with more detailed and practical material. But for now, thanks so much for your time, and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.